Another really important aspect of understanding the shapes of molecules is to understand that molecules quite often are polar and when they're polar they will have what we call a dipole moment. And if they have a dipole moment they can be subjected to an electric field which will cause a force to be exerted on them. We can measure the reaction of the force because of the electric field, because of the dipole moment of the molecule, and we can then figure things out about the molecule. Now, I may have said a lot of things that don't make a lot of sense to you yet, so we'll just take it one step at a time. First, the concept of a dipole moment. What is a dipole moment? Well, a dipole moment is a physical concept that comes from understanding that when small charges are separated from one another. So, for example, let's say we have a molecule and we have on one side a molecule being, the atom being more positive and the other side the atom being more negative so that the charges are separated and there's a small distance in between them. Then we have the concept of a dipole moment which is directed from the positive side of the molecule to the negative side of the molecule and the magnitude the strength of that dipole, how big it is, how strong it is, how effective it is, depends on the charge on either side times the distance between them. So the farther they're apart, the greater the dipole moment. The more charge is separated from each other, the greater the dipole moment. It's simply the product between the charge on each side and the distance between them. Now notice, you don't add the charges together. You have a positive charge on one side and you have an exact equal negative charge on the other side. Whatever they happen to be, you just take the magnitude of that charge and represent it here. So you don't double it or anything like that. That's often a source of confusion. The units we use to express the dipole moment is the unit of the bis. And we use the, the capital letter D to indicate that. And one Debye is 3.34 times 10 to the minus 30 coulombs times meters. Now everybody knows what a meter is. Not everybody readily knows what a coulomb is. A coulomb is a bunch of charges. And how many charges do you need to make a coulomb? Well, if you have this many electrons put together, or that many protons, because it doesn't matter, it's single units of charge, which is either an electron or proton. If you have this many of them together, you have one coulomb of charge. So that's why when you talk about molecules, there's just a very small amount of charge, a single electron, a double electron, a fraction of an electron, whatever it may be. And so therefore, the, the unit of the bi has to be really, really small, of course. And also the distance between them, it's no, no means that it's going to be a meter. It's going to be in terms of nanometers and picometers, so very, very small distances between them. So just to get a feel of how do you calculate the magnitude of the dipole moment, let's say that we had two charges separated from one another with a distance of 150 picometers. So remember, a picometer is 1 1,000th of a nanometer. A picometer is 10 to the minus 12 meters. And let's say that the charge is equivalent to an electron charge. So we have two charges a positive charge and a negative charge separated by 150 picometers, what would be the dipole moment, the magnitude of the dipole moment? And so you can say then that the magnitude P, magnitude P is equal to Q times D. Q would be one electron, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. So one electron has that much charge. You multiply that times the separation distance of 150 times 10 to the minus 12 meters, and that will then give you the magnitude of that dipole moment. So you should be able to calculate, given the charge and given the separation distance, you should be able to figure out the dipole moment. So for uh, a molecule, we'll end up calculating and figuring out how to calculate the charge separation of a molecule, how far apart they are from each other, which is typically the bond distance, the bond length between the two atoms. And now from that, we should be able to calculate the dipole moment of a molecule. So this is just a simple example of how to do that. So 1.602 e to the 19 minus times 150 e to the 12 minus equals. So we end up with 2.4 times 10 to the minus 29 coulombs times meters. So how many Debye is that? Well, we can, we can then, of course, converse that to Debye. We want Debye in the numerator. And we want Coulomb meters in the denominator. One Debye is equal to 3.34 times 10 to the minus 30. So if we divide this number by that, we should get the number of Debyes. So divide by 3.34 e to the 30 minus equals. So in this case, that would be equal to 7.2 Debye. So that's how you figure out the dipole moment of a, um, of a dipole. 
So we call those dipoles. And so most of the time when we have polar molecules, those polar molecules will be dipoles and we should be able to calculate the dipole moment of a molecule. And that's how you do that.